I'm going to say a lot of bad things about this game, but that doesn't mean I didn't enjoy it. In fact, I liked it a lot. It's just a shame we had to go through 10 years of Final Fantasy XIII to get to it, and this was originally supposed to be a Final Fantasy XIII sequel. If Roman Emperors could get a look at the name Noctis Lucis Calum, I'm pretty certain they would tell the developers Dudus Etium Latin. In fact, that name is so Latin that I think it's required by law that it be offset with tiny leaves whenever it's written. As far as Inmedius Res openings go, this is by far the most pointless one, since the whole point of Inmedius Res is to create questions on how the story got to this point. This just gives away the fact that there's a time skip later in the game, and doesn't even show enough of the future to make me curious. And when you start your game with all looks like a fight against the devil, that's a problem. Set forth with my blessing, Prince Noctis. Sean Bean isn't voicing King Regis in the scene, which is weird, because he does in the Kingsglaive movie. And his character dies not long after this. So what the hell? You had one job, and that was to kill Sean Bean in a video game and complete the circle, goddammit. That hair would annoy the hell out of anyone who isn't an anime character. I'm not even sure how one gets the hair on the back of your head to point straight up. I fear I have left too much unsaid. I could have said everything I wanted to say to you back in the throne room. Instead, I waited until you were about to leave, so I'd have to drag my crippled old ass out here to tell you. Do mind your manners around your charming bride-to-be. Who in their right mind sends the prince away from the crown city during wartime with only three friends and a convertible to meet his bride-to-be in what is enemy territory? You're getting ready to sign a peace treaty, meaning you are still technically at war. Take heed. Once you set forth, you cannot turn back. You think I would? Noctis is directing a lot of snippiness at his father, and the game never gives a reason for it. Hell, I think there's more scenes of Noctis and his father in the trailers for this game than there is in the actual game, and all those trailer scenes are actually absent from the game. I know a game can change a lot in 10 years, but some of the cut material they showed off was just two E3s ago, and I feel like it would have explained a lot. Oh, tall. My son. Stop being such an emo pussy is basically what your dad just said. You're just gonna have to push her all the way. You all have cell phones. Call a tow truck. Hell, that's actually an option in this game for when your car breaks down. These guys are currently regretting their decision to wear leather in the desert. When the night has come. Un Believable. Yeah, that's a cover by Stand By Me in a Final Fantasy game. I guess it's true what they say, that if you live long enough, you'll see everything. Not exactly a fairy tale beginning, huh, Prince Noctis? Well, only if you don't count him being a prince on his way to meet his bride who also happens to be a princess. Then yeah, I guess you have a point. If your mechanic looks like this, you mistook a porn set for a real garage. If anyone would like to argue that Cindy isn't just blatant fan service, I present you her opening shot. A slow reveal of her ass before any other characteristic. Prince. Like they took your old man and kicked the dignity out of him. Does being the magical royal family mean nothing? No one treats Noctis like he's their future ruler. Normally in this situation, people would be falling all over each other to get on his good side. She's gonna take a while. I wish my mechanic could diagnose what's wrong with my car without ever opening the hood to take a look or hearing what the problem is. Uh, bit steep for a simple tune-up, don't you think? Apparently this royal retinue didn't bring much money on their diplomatic road trip or even a credit card. Told me he ought to have y'all take care of some ornery varmints that have been causing a ruckus around here. You do not ask the prince of your country to go out into the wilderness to kill dangerous animals in order to pay a repair fee. You just bill the government. They really did go to a lot of effort to make this game more realistic, right down to the Coleman Camping Supplies product placement. Before I forget, would y'all mind making a little delivery for me? No, not at all. Perfect. Thought you'd say yes, so I already put it in the trunk. That's the line of a woman who's used to men agreeing to do errands for and not understanding why they're so helpful. Umbra, bringing us stuff. Had a boy. A dog can really track a scent. These guys don't question the fact that Luna Freya's dog managed to track them down in the desert to deliver her scrapbook to Noctis. As far as I know, she's on another continent. Certainly knows how to find us. <laughs> These guys also seem not interested in the fact that Luna Freya's dog can get back to Luna Freya before them while driving in a car. I'm afraid you're out of luck. Are we? The boats bring you here. What about them? Well, they'll not take you forth. How do you know they came for the ferry? They could have just come to eat at the restaurant. Considering that Final Fantasy hasn't had a memorable villain since Sephiroth, they seem to have taken a look at Kefka and said to themselves, yeah, let's do that again. Not a ship in sight. What gives? Wouldn't the royal family have at least one boat of their own? Or at least charter one for the prince to use on a diplomatic errand? Why is the royal family taking public transport? Hairdressing must be the dominant business in this world, since everyone has $500 haircuts. All you gotta do is find me some rough gemstones. If you're a reporter and know who Noctis is, shouldn't you be trying to line up an interview? Not sending him out to look for gemstones? I mean, he is on a mission to bring peace to the country and all. That seems like a story. That special coin you got? It commemorates the Oracle's ascension. Yeah, you didn't see that happen. You were sitting here by the dock when he tossed Noctis the coin. Hope you watched the King's Glaive movie. Otherwise, this vision Noctis has of his dad's death is not going to sum it all up. Actually, I hope you didn't watch the King's Glaive movie, even if you do have unanswered questions. Seriously, the Nivelheim attack on Lucis and King Regis' death should have been a playable section of the game, and I'm pretty sure it was at one point based on gameplay footage from the trailers. We shouldn't have to watch a movie and an anime to get the complete picture. It's in all the papers. And would be available on your phone, too. But getting important news from a paper has more theatrical weight, so Ignis had to go pick up a newspaper this morning. Insomnia. False.
You can get away with nicknaming a city something cute like the city that never sleeps, but actually naming a city after a sleeping disorder feels tactless. You don't see cities named dyslexia or bulimia for good reason. And that means we go back to insomnia. Returning to the city that's now under enemy control. Sounds like a plan to me. They've set up an inspection point. If the road ahead's blocked, then we find a way around. That's not a very good blockade then if they didn't blockade the side road that leads to the city that's right alongside the main road. Oh. <laughs> don't bother! But... It's his phone. He can't just leave it on the ground. He paid for that, bro. I think you should have tried calling people before you reach the outskirts of the city. The news just told me I'm dead, along with my father and Luna. It's called propaganda. As a future monarch, you should be aware of it. Listen, I'm heading out to Hammerhead. If you're looking for the whole truth, you know where to find me. Well, you just mentioned the place by name over an unsecured line, so no reason to be coy about it now. Luna Freya did not look like this at the end of the Kingslave movie. That's not even the same dress, even. And this game picks up right after that ended. Yeah, they're two different things, but they're part of this huge multimedia plan for this game, and I expect at least a little consistency. Crystal and the King's Ring. What they've been after all along. That actually accounts for 90% of fantasy plots and around 100% of Final Fantasy plots. Lucius got dealt a losing hand, and your old man played it the best he could. He saw this coming a mile away. He saw the double cross coming a mile away, but did nothing to actually prepare for it other than to send his son off to marry the woman the treaty stipulated he marry? That is not preparing. That is meeting your obligations. The power of kings passed from the old to the new through the bonding of souls. One such soul lies before you. To claim your forebear's power is your birthright. One thing you spend a lot of time doing in this game is gathering the royal arms from the previous kings of Lucis, which would have been a lot easier had all the kings been entombed in the same location like every other royal family. Instead, they built their tombs in the far corners of the kingdom in the middle of monster-filled dungeons. One is even on another continent. Here's where we go our separate ways. Here's why I leave the game entirely, except for a scene later where I will apologize for being unable to protect the king. Not like I could have redeemed myself by staying here to protect the future king or something. What will you do? Keep an eye on the Nifs. Find out what they're up to. What they're up to? They've taken over the world and accomplished everything they wanted. At this point, it's all cleanup. Wars. Huh. What are they good for? Substituting song lyrics for character lines is never as cute as you think it is, especially in a world where that song doesn't even exist. Spelling the name Loki with a Q isn't fooling anyone, and while I'm on it, let me point out that Niflheim is Norse hell, so Final Fantasy continues his long tradition of copying from Norse mythology. Honestly, I'm not even sure why they bother introducing this guy. He appears for this one scene, dies, and that's the extent of his contribution to the game. Outside of Arden, none of the villains matter. So... The prince eludes death. Well, yeah, of course he did. Did you believe your own propaganda that he died in the city? The ring is the final piece. Yeah, yeah, Ajnaz Durbatulek. We've all heard it before. Eluna Freya has absconded with it. Find and kill her. Luna Freya is Ravis' sister, and you just put him in charge of the army in Lucis. Maybe give the order to kill his sister behind his back, because he shows no sign of being that heartless toward her in this game. This guy and this guy are never seen again in the game, which makes me wonder why they're so prominent in this scene with the other two. Hell, this guy, the Emperor of Niflheim, technically isn't seen again either. So, Iris, what was it like inside the Crown City? It was like a scene from a really bad movie. They're out walking with Talcat. They went to see the sights. We should too. Gladiolus's little sister starts putting the moves on Noctis even though she knows he's engaged. Isn't it great? I'd buy out the whole place if I could. Notice how on their date, Noctis can only act interested about shopping. All these shops seem right up your alley. You know me so well. I'm just a girl who loves to shop. This game is not making it easy to defend its all-male cast when every woman is either dressed like a porn star or acts like this. Get this. Only women work there. As a matter of fact, women are the ones who do all the work in this town. Oh, I see. That's how they're making up for it. Doesn't explain why the town is so sexist against men, though. Why can't men work at the power plant, too? There's this legend about a sword, and the sword's supposed to be behind a waterfall nearby. It may well be one of the lost tombs. How are any of these tombs lost? King Regis had all these weapons at his disposal, so I assume he journeyed to the tombs and acquired them for himself when he was young. Shouldn't there be a record of their location? <laughs> With the flashing visions, the head pains, and a meteor, this shit is getting a bit too Final Fantasy VII. Even assuming Arden somehow knew that Noctis was having visions of the meteor, he shouldn't have been able to guess that Noctis would come to these viewfinders to look at it. Yet on deaf ears, the god's tongue falls. The king made to kneel in pain, he crawls. So how do we keep him on his feet? You need only heed the call. Visit the Archean. None of these guys question how Arden knows about Noctis' visions. I can take you. Totally unnecessary, since there's a highway that leads right to it. It's not even far away. You can see it from town. You're not to pass me. Lose sight of me, and you'll lose your way. They really won't, though. You cannot get lost driving to a giant meteor. <gasps> Blessed stars of life and light, deliver us from darkness blight. I get the feeling that the rhyme is unnecessary for healing the Star Scourge, and it's more to do with the glowing magic Luna Freya has. Pieces that broke off when the meteor fell. Almost fell, I should say. For the Archeon caught it. 
And he's still there, holding the thing up. But why would Titan continue holding the meteor up after catching it? He could just sit it down now that it's not falling from the sky. Guess he never misses leg day. Memes? In my Final Fantasy game? God damn. Even though this is just another version of the Greek myth of Atlas, this is still an amazing moment. But then again, this was completely spoiled by the trailers. I'm sick of this endless walking. And I'm sick of your endless whining. You're being chased by a giant god. I think he has the right to be a little whiny. The speech raises Noctis' stats considerably. Noctis should have Gladiolus repeated a few more times to make him OP. Did Noctis suddenly become Kratos? Because he is capable of blocking Atlas's foot and fist with a sword. Apparently everyone can now block the arm of a giant with just their measly body weight and a weapon. Noctis survives this. Seriously. He's not turned into paste by just one punch. In fact, you can stand there and get smacked around multiple times. This is like a fly parrying a fly swatter. It occurs to me I never formally introduced myself. Izunia! Arden Izunia! Imperial Chancellor Izunia! I think someone like Ignis would have figured that out after hearing his first name. Hell, I'm surprised they didn't know him by sight. Noctis' dad certainly did. This is one of the guys your country has been at war with for years. Rather than take Noctis prisoner and bring him back to the Emperor in chains, they impounded his ride and dropped him off at the Chocobo Ranch. By the storm sender's blessing, will the path to the stone be opened? The Oracle goes hence in her king's name. Translation. Go get the god Rama on your side while your girl Luna Freya goes on ahead to Altitia. Speaking in riddles makes even mundane information sound impressive. The Oracle and Ring shall await their king at the walls of water. Why doesn't Luna Freya just meet up with Noctis so they can do this together? Both her dog and Gentiana can find Noctis whenever they want. There's really no reason for them to stay separated, especially when she needs to give Noctis the Ring of the Lucy and Gentiana can only communicate through rhyming. I can buy that Noctis looked away for a moment and Gentiana vanished in that split second, but Ignis, Pronto, and Gladiolus were looking straight at her. You would think they would have reacted. They can't all have looked away at the same time. At the very least, could Luna Freya maybe give Noctis her phone number instead of having her dog curry a scrapbook between them? Let Luna know I'm okay, and she won't have to wait much longer. We'll be together soon. You could have wrote that down in the book, you know. Umbra is a magical dog, but he's displayed no ability to talk. Getting shocked by Rama causes Noctis to flash back to his childhood. I guess he had a lot of memories of similar events that could trigger this. No? It's just him sitting in his bedroom again? Why does getting shocked trigger this specific memory? There has to be a connection for that to make sense. Want to know why Noctis was in a wheelchair as a kid? So do I, but I don't want to watch the anime to find out. Here we are. Fosho Hollow. I can only hear the words Fosho Hollow when they say the name of this dungeon. About your car. Yeah. Well, I found her, but she's out of base. Why did the Empire want the regalia so bad? It's just a nice car that they stole and impounded in the military base to take back to the Empire. Okay, summons in this game are badass, even if they would kill Noctis' friends since Rama only picks up Noctis. Male prettiness equals evil unless you combine it with the trendy clothes. Didn't you hold back Atlas's punch not long ago in the same manner? Why can Ravis slap you around like it's nothing? Villains in this game walk away and do nothing more often than the Turks in Final Fantasy VII. None of us said a word about Noct. They just showed up and then... <sighs> Poor Jared. And yet they didn't kill you, Gladiolus' little sister. Just the old guy, who I honestly didn't even know was important or that I should care. Going to Kayim. We... We can't just stay here and do nothing. So instead, I'll go to Kayim and do nothing. Well, she does plant a vegetable garden. This dream Noctis is having is actually a trailer created for the game. Nothing that happens in the dream is in any way connected to or foretelling anything that happens in the game. They just wanted to get their money's worth out of it. Hey, you know that mission you just did where you snuck into a military base? Well, do it again. The base commander walks like his motion caption actor broke his hip during filming. Does that mean you weren't? I placed our captive into the hunter's custody, but I've just been informed. He's fled. So this entire mission was pointless. Glad we took time away from the plot for it. Why do all the strong people wait until all the soldiers on the base have been killed before attacking? The fact that this isn't scripted and I can engage in an aerial sword fight is enough to take off a sin. Sorry, but this girl doesn't work after hours. I could, but there wouldn't be a single gill in it for me. That is a weak reason for leaving the fight you just started. Can even a single villain stick around for a few minutes at this point? Trouble is, they ain't had much luck finding a certain something by the name of Mithril. Why exactly would you need Mithril to fix a fucking boat? If you're going to require an exotic resource to get something working, at least make the thing I'm repairing an airship. Gonna have to ask you to handle this boat business without me. Say what? I got some business of my own to deal with. Yeah, you know, Square Enix wants to sell DLC. So I have to leave the group for now so this part of the game can be explained later for a nominal fee. Don't you hate it when the villain reads a script and is always in the right place to greet the heroes and know exactly what they're there for? I mean, that's the only explanation I can come up with for why Arden is here in the swamp and knows Noctis needs Mithril. There's nothing in it for this ex-mercenary to turn you in. 
There isn't? I'm pretty sure Noctis is wanted by the Empire. The people you work for. You were even in the Emperor's throne room when he found out Noctis was still alive. And everything about your character suggests you're doing this for the money. Oh, spacious. There's so gonna be a big nasty here. Just because you have your characters point out the obvious game cliches doesn't make them funny or okay to use. However, if any developer would like to mention ledge paint, I will happily take off a few sins. Mithril ore can only be found in a demon-filled dungeon. Who knew? Arriving back in Listalem, they find the power plant under attack by demons. So of course Noctis dons the only spare suit to go in and stop them. You might back up. I thought we were partners. Anyway, place is crawling with demons. Wait a second. You sound familiar. Yeah, almost like you've known him your entire life and should have no trouble placing his voice. Hell, why is Gladiolus pretending he doesn't know Noctis in this situation? It was Gladiolus all along? No way! Whoa, someone did a number on you though. You should see the other guy. Buy the season pass to find out why Gladiolus has a giant scar on his chest now. Who is this guy right here? He just shows up and everyone acts like they know him. He has no lines and I'm assuming he won't have any importance until the DLC comes out. I'm sorry. Sorry I wasn't there for your father. I swore an oath to protect the king, but I wasn't strong enough to uphold it. What's that? Am I coming with you to Altitia to help? Hell no. What am I, your bodyguard? Of course, we've come for the Hydrian. And you've gone to such lengths to prepare. I really like reminding people of their own plans in case they forgot. This boat ride goes on forever. This is pretty and all, but anyone driving anything bigger than a small yacht would be unable to get into this city. That's as old as they get. Seems in order. You may pass. It's an old code, sir, but it checks out. This city is built on like four different water levels right next to the ocean. So this is your maiden visit. Enjoying it so far? Dave Finoy? Is there any game you haven't been in this year? With all these dialogue choices and Dave Finoy voicing this character, I'm suddenly feeling like this turned into a telltale game. Atisha is a weird place. It resembles Venice with its waterways, has soldiers dressed like its revolutionary France, and is led by a Hillary Clinton doppelganger. Ahead lies a future uncertain, yet sure is the astral memory wherein the king may walk. The dog can let you time travel back to before you arrived in Altitia. I know that sounds stupid and is stupid, but the open world part of the game is over, and this was the best way they could come up with to let you go back and finish any mission you didn't bother doing before coming here. If you wish to hold the right, you must ensure my citizens' safety and aid in their evacuation. Four guys are not going to be able to do much evacuating. That's fine, but what about damage to the city? Once the right has begun, I will not be accountable for what follows. That's not how government works. If Leviathan destroys your city because you allowed them to wake it up, you are in for a lot of questions. Assign three of your own for the evacuation effort. Whom you choose is up to you. He's only got the three, and you just asked for three. These Niflheim soldiers bust through the door and point their weapons at Luna Freya, just for her to walk right past them to the podium. Usually when you see that kind of aggression, they're here to arrest you or stop you from doing something. But the Empire needs her to awaken Leviathan so they can kill it. So putting her under aggressive armed guards for five seconds is pointless. This is not how an evacuation works. You don't wait until someone gives a speech and then start evacuating the people in the few minutes you have left before the calamity. Do not surrender to despair. Have faith. For our gods watch over us. You know, it's kind of hard to sell that line when the people of this city have to be evacuated to keep them safe from a vengeful god. I will not rest until the darkness is banished from our world. Your generic speech inspires us. Knocked. The Empire's here. I can see him. I have no doubt that you can, but you never turned around to look, and you didn't know they were there until Ignis told you about them. Knocked! Jump! What? No time for questions! There's plenty of time for questions, in fact. Or at least one question. Why do you want me to jump off this building? I don't know what that thing is, but it's doing what it's doing and that annoys me. Noctis survives a fall from several stories up onto solid ground. I guess he rolled with a fall. Considering that this entire city is toast right now, I'm surprised Camilla agreed to allow the trial of Leviathan to go forward. Why is it Noctis had no trouble blocking Titan's attacks, but Leviathan can send him flying like a ragdoll? Magical girl performing an ancient ceremony to help save the world. Charismatic villain appears behind her while the hero is out of commission. This is going to get Sephirothy, isn't it? The signs are all there. You just got Aerithed. There's no blood on Arden's knife. About that ring. On second thought, you let him have it. Let's talk about Arden's plan. Why didn't you power Noctis up like this from the start instead of expecting him to fight a fruitless battle against Leviathan? Noctis was about to die right up until you did this. I know it could get away with an easy Dragon Ball Z joke here, but honestly, this part is awesome enough that I'll allow it. At this point, Luna Freya might as well just be Aerith. You can't kill a heroine in this series and connect her to flowers without that comparison coming up. When you find yourself alone amid a lightless place, look to the distance. Know that I am there. 
Remember me from my generic optimism. Seriously, if they wanted to sell the relationship between these two, they could have at least had one scene together before this. It's been nothing but scrapbooking through Dog Messenger and childhood flashbacks. Final Fantasy 15 steals the girl reaching out her hand toward the camera scene from every other Final Fantasy. Bet you never made that connection before, did you? This is why you guys come to me. She even seeks down into the water like Aerith did. Once again, the Empire had the perfect opportunity to take care of Noctis for good while he recovered. Instead, they let him rest peacefully in a city they control. I would have liked to have seen how Ignis went blind during the battle, but I get the feeling that story is being saved for the DLC. You had that ring in your hand the entire time since you were pulled from the water? That seems unlikely since you were unconscious. There is no way this city is still standing after all of that. I guess they never built roads on this continent, since all the traveling here is done by train. Which also makes me wonder why they bother bringing the regalia with them if they were planning to travel by train all the way to the Imperial City. The hell is wrong with you? His bride-to-be just died and he's sitting in silence, you dick. I guess Gladiolus is just worried that with Luna Freya dead, Noctis is likely to start banging his sister Iris. You need to grow up and get over it. Get over his dead fiancé? Have you ever heard of the concept of too soon? How's that ring fit you? You'd rather carry it around than wear it? She gave her life so you could do your duty. You're the king, responsibilities, yada yada yada, no time to act like a normal human being. We've got rush plot points to get through, so I have to turn into an absolute dick to steer this boat to the finish line. Noctis is starting to remind me of Frodo, if Frodo got deep in anime and alternative lifestyles. Having one of your party members go blind and act accordingly with his disability even during combat took some balls from the development team and I applaud that. That being said, this part can drag while you wait for Ignis to catch up. Let's be frank. My vision hasn't improved, and probably won't. Yet in spite of this, I would remain with you all. To the very end. Can I just say how awesome Ignis is in this game? Not only does he get some of the best lines, he loves cooking and being British. Rumors of longer nights. They've been growing longer day by day. There was talk of it back in Lucis, but recent days have shown an unseasonably sharp change. <sighs> Should this trend continue, before long, there won't be daylight. That should be impossible as long as the planet is still revolving around the sun. But this game makes up a microscopic parasite that eats sunlight and turns humans into demons to get around that fact. I can't believe that sentence actually spilled from my mouth. I'm going to go cut my tongue off as penance. The Empire's already slain half of the six. They did. Three of them with Noctis and you get see you in the hallway. I thought, oh wow, I should have made the villain. Okay, that joke is done. I'm not doing that again. Never seen anything like it. A storm cloud? Are you sure? I'm pretty sure anyone from the Midwest has seen more ominous clouds than that. Somehow Arden stops time to antagonize Noctis, but the train inexplicably keeps moving. Arden will never use his power again, by the way. Like, who comes up with this stuff? I couldn't dream something like this if I tried. Arden is trying real hard to not break the fourth wall right now. Easy there, buddy. Oh, didn't see that coming. Shut up! Be careful there! Wait, is this for real? Also, Arden is easily the funnest villain Final Fantasy has had since Kefka, and that's something I can be down with. This is funny! Dude, are you seriously trying to kill me? That line from the game's villain gave me one of the best laughs I've had in a long time. Just imagine one of the super serious villains from the past couple games saying that. Tower defense segment. This power to create illusions and make Noctis knock Prompto out of the train is also a criminally underused power of Arden's. Also, he takes Prompto hostage after this, but just uses him to taunt Noctis later instead of anything useful. Isn't it technically still daytime right now, judging from the lighting? And this game made it very clear that demons can't come out during the day. Your new engineers. Biggs and Wedge. I would trust Biggs and Wedge more if they weren't dressed as World War I and World War II German soldiers, especially since no one else in the Empire is dressed like this, which leads me to believe this is their preferred attire, which raises some serious questions. This old woman tells Noctis about a conversation that happened between Ravis and Luna Freya shortly before she died, a conversation the old woman was not present for. Go to Noctis. Show him the truth of your heart. This scene couldn't have happened long after Ravis met Noctis at the military base. So what made Ravis change his mind about him? He was about to kill Noctis the last time they met. In fact, Square Enix is going to patch this game just to explain more about Ravis. So people watching this video post-patch keep their snippy comments to themselves. Were, were you excited to marry Lady Luna Freya? Because she was really excited to marry you. She looked so happy the day her dress arrived. She really loved you. Hold on, just gotta pour some salt into that open wound, and there, you're scarred for life. How did talking to that kid trigger a flashback to a scene the kid wasn't even present for? So you're Lady Luna Freya's fiance, right? Wanna know something? Okay then. Everyone knows she liked pretty flowers, but you wanna know what else she liked? Cool stickers. The fuck? Suddenly I'm getting Snowpiercer flashbacks. You better get in here. Something's Got not it. right. I'm not going to give you advance warning about it though. It's funner when danger is a surprise. I'm worried about your friends. They've fallen and they can't get up. This villain even recites early 90s memes. We didn't even know they were called memes back then. She even nearly freezes Noctis, Ignis, and Gladiolus to death for no other reason than it was a cool way to make an entrance. Hold on a second, I gotta class this place up. There we go. Cease this madness. 
That boy will never be king. Ravis lost his left arm during the events of the Kingslade movie when he tried to wear the Ring of Lucy, and that movie took place just before this game got started. Yet in this flashback, he already has his new arm that replaces the one he lost, and this flashback is taking place before the events of the movie. Careful, you'll get tears on the camera lens. For a moment I felt death's chill wind. Such is the might of the gods. But then I remembered I'm immortal. How the hell did Square Enix get the immortal villain so wrong in Final Fantasy XIII 2, yet so right in this game? That trigger can actually deactivate Noctis' powers. Somehow. They don't really explain it. A common problem with the last few chapters of this game. So are you not going to follow him? He killed your fiancé and you're just letting him walk out of the train? This is a whole lot more prettier than Cloud's motorcycle chase through Midgard, but a whole lot less exciting. It's closing! For it! Gate that is supposedly closing fast waits patiently after the car is destroyed. I feel that Gladiolus would have little trouble getting over this train car to reunite with Noctis. Noctis doesn't turn invisible in this scene. Ladies and gentlemen, Final Fantasy Silent Hills. Noctis survives this. Why does no one ever die from falling in Final Fantasy games? I'm someone who watched the movie and I still wonder why Ravis was even in this game. In case there was any doubt, it's a trap. And yet, the game gives you no other choice but to walk right into it. Prompto, you didn't reveal information to Ocelot, did you? That's how you get the bad ending. So, MTs, they've got those code prints. Just like I do. Do they? Never looked. Yeah. So, as it turns out, I'm one of them. If Prompto is an MT, then that means he's a demon, since MT soldiers are made from demons, and demons are infected humans. So instead of Prompto saying he grew up in Nibelheim and was a human who was going to be infected and made into an MT, he says, I'm one of them. Let's be vague because reasons. Hope you porn wasn't on that server. The ring represents a great burden. But you don't bear it alone. This game couldn't be winking at you any harder at this point. I speak for everyone who's ever played this game when I say, fuck this boss fight. Fuck this boss fight in particular. A sorry end for the High Commander. For anyone. He was a man with hopes and dreams. Was he? I wouldn't know. The game never spelled out any of that. Allow me to regale you with tale. Allow me to fill in all the holes in the plot in the 11th hour. I gave you my name earlier. But you should know that it was not the name given to me at birth. Arden. Lucis Kylum is my proper name. I honestly had to look up why this name was supposed to be important. Then I was like, oh, Kalem is Noctis' family name. They're related. Neat. <laughs> what? I can't hear you over the soundtrack. Arise as its champion. Only wants the crystal and the king. Arden explained his entire plan, but I still have no idea what he's trying to do. It involves locking Noctis away for 10 years inside the crystal to absorb its power, bathing the world in endless night and demons, and I got nothing. He used the word redemption in there at the end though, so I guess there's that. So it is ordained, the revelation of Bahamut. Now to dump even more info in your head, here's Bahamut. The heart of the crystal, wherein lies the soul of the star. And it is in this place that the king will gain the power to fulfill his calling. Oh, that. By the light of the crystal and the glaives of rulers past. Only at the throne can the chosen receive it, and only at the cost of a life his own. Man, summoning Knights of the Round in this game is hardcore. Your hair would be a lot longer than that after 10 years inside a magic crystal. I like how I've reached the point where I can sound like an expert on the effects of magic crystal stasis. Be waiting. In Hammerhead. Uh, no. They can come get you. This is a world full of demons now. You don't send a dog to tell your only hope and salvation to meet you at a gas station miles away. And how did they know that Noctis would return at this moment at this location 10 years later? Where did he get that boat? Noctis awoke on a deserted island. After 10 years of waiting for Noctis to return, his friends send that kid whose grandpa died to meet Noctis on the road instead of picking him up themselves. Best Halloween ever. Also, how come all these demons aren't attacking the truck? For the first half of this game, it didn't even want you driving at night. 10 years of darkness and somehow all the plants are still alive. Also, 10 years is not age these guys at all unless you consider Prompto growing a soul patch to be aging. Finally get to rock these threads. Wear them with pride. Yeah. Just hope they still fit. For clothes that still fit, you've had to have worn them previously. This is the first time you've ever worn the king's robes. Ifrit, the Infernian. He doesn't share the Glacian's fondness for mankind. But you can expect a warm welcome. Get it? Because he's hot. Because he uses fire. <sighs> Just ring the damn bell. Oh, so this is where the game started. Fighting a final boss with no development or character. I guess I should just be thankful that this fight happens before the one with Arden and they don't pull a Necron like in Final Fantasy IX. Coolest moment in the game. Did you see that? Did you see what I did there? Because she uses ice, she's blue and it, it's cold. Fuck it, just ring the bell. Can I see your photos? 
Uh, yeah. I just need one to take with me. Be honest, how many of you took a photo like this one with you into the final battle? I can understand why Arden would create illusions of Noctis' dad and Luna Freya, but why make illusions of Nyx, the main character from the movie, and the Niflheim Emperor, two people Noctis never met? The throne brings you here. <laughs> it seats only one. Off my chair, Jester. The king sits there. The once helpless and hapless prince. Is he now ready to claim his crown? Don't let us down. That rhymed. <laughs> Suddenly, Matrix Revolutions. Okay, now I'll compare this to Dragon Ball. Seriously, dude, just raise a golden chocobo and go to the island to get Knights of the Round. It's not that difficult. Death by Quick Time Event, or Quick Time Aga as it should be called here. Isn't this the ending of Titanic? Perfectly groomed hair!